Give it up for Mr. Marlon and Mr. Mack. being a student at Rice, that's one thing that you are first, is a student. You're an athlete second. I know we have a lot of athletes in this room. <laughs> and I know you have aspirations and goals that you want to achieve. It first starts with your academic process. Being eligible to take it to the next level. And there's a lot of things that are encompassed in that. Being attended in class is just one. You got to be there first to make it happen. And, and the great thing about being a student athlete is that everybody's always watching you. You have one thing that is totally different than anything that I had to experience when I was in high school and even in college. You have one asset and one enemy, and that is social media. Social media can be your greatest asset and can be your worst enemy. You have to manage it. You have to make sure that you take advantage of all of the training that you receive here and how to market yourself how to brand yourself. <clears throat> Branding is a huge, huge, huge thing. And also controlling any of those things that are seen and said about you. Colleges now take social media, ex media extremely, extremely important to what you do. They want to know what you're doing on social media at all times, and they will manage that account for you. It will get you into college, it will make you lose a scholarship. It will get you into school and get you right out of school as fast as you started. So you always have to think about what's on social media, what you post, what people post about you, and how you're visualized on social media. How many of you guys have social media accounts? Oh, everybody in the room. Who doesn't have a social media account? Yeah, that's, it. that's a better question. Who doesn't have a social media account? What types of social media do you have? Instagram. Uh, what do you use? Instagram. 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 Facebook. Twitter. 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 Snapchat. Snapchat. Who got MySpace? Oh, oh. That's not so. That's MySpace. You have to be really careful on social media, guys, because it's out there for a lifetime. <clears throat> it never goes away. So whatever you put, whatever you allow for someone to put out there with you, on there, I know I have my nephew that actually is working on his master's out of Sacramento State. And we had a Chris, uh, New Year's party. And we had an apple cider uh, there that we were 
toasting in to, to New Year's and he had the little champagne glass in his hand and he wanted to take a photo and put it on, on Instagram. And I said, no, you won't. <laughs> I don't ever want to see you on social media with a drink in your hand. Any type of drink. Or even if even if it's apple cider. You want to get you don't want to give that kind of connotation. Because it can lead to worse things for you. Uh, can, people can monopolize it, they can change it, uh, the video, they can change uh, the, the photo. And so the things you have to really be cognizant of and really keep that in front of yourself and stay, and stay abreast of it because it's amazing what can and will happen when it comes to social media. And that's one of the things I wanted to emphasize. <laughs> we have some guys here that we work with using a system called screen scraping that lost their businesses, 30 of them, in the whole state. <laughs> Things that they were doing on the internet that probably cost the company over $110 million. So there are things that can that you can do technology-wise that can make you break you. You know that kids that are born today will never drive an automobile. Technology will change to where when you get behind the wheel, the car will drive itself. Ford today has changed their complete lineup of cars. So in eight years, everything that they make will be self-driven, automated cars. That's quick, guys. That's coming up real, real fast. Technology moves at light speed. It's not waiting on you. It's not waiting on us. It's changing the way that we operate and the way that we market. The way that we engage with our clients. And it will uh, impact as you get older how you live your life. It will also affect what type of opportunities that are going to be there for you as you get older. Because there will be jobs that are there today, there will be treatment that you receive that will change due to technology. And we're seeing that right now. We're seeing jobs created. And we're seeing jobs eliminated. It will change the way that when you get injured, how you're treated, how your rehabilitation goes forward, and everything that's centered around. So stay on top of it. You're in a great class. God, I wish we had these things available to us as I was coming up. You guys know what you're going to do as a career? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you go around the room and let's talk about what you want to do. Talk to me about it. Come in. Uh, I want to pursue sports media operations. Sports media operations. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you want to do with that? Uh, you know, make highlights and stuff like that. All right. Other people. Nice. Nice. Someone else? I know we had a couple other hands yeah. pop up real quick. I want to do sports broadcasting. Sports broadcasting. Oh, nice. Not like Joe Buck, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous opportunity. I've done sports broadcasting before. No, go ahead. Uh, I'm in sports broadcasting too, but for like NFL. Uh, NFL? Uh, like a Deion Sanders. All right. Don't they get into that side of it? On the NFL network? Yes. All right. Anyone else? You know, I tell you guys, you have the curriculum now to start that foundation moving in that direction. And, and finding that, implementing it, it's all about networking and also having an educational base behind it. It will lead you to that next level. But forming those relationships, forming those type of opportunities. One of my friends that I, I played for all in college now is a trainer for the Astros. Seven uh, Johnson. He went from having one gym that he started in the back of a box truck. Before that, he was an undercover narcotics agent with Harris coming with Houston Police Department. But Cedric was always a, a workout fanatic. Strongest guy. He was in college, Cedric was 6'1", 185, and he bench pressed 550. Mm -hmm. And saying that he was ripped, he was ripped. <laughs> And you look at Cedric today, and you think he's 29, 30 years old, and he's at least 60. The guy is in great shape. 
He owns three gyms, travels with Astros, and he and Crane, before he bought the team, were good friends because he did his personal training. And that's how they met. So when you look at relationships and people that you meet in your life, building those relationships can take you to where you're trying to go. And finding the right mentorship opportunities are also important to you, especially getting into the field that you want to get in, and to broadcasting, to the NFL. All those opportunities are there for you. But getting to meet the right person that's already doing that, or on, or that's in that direction, can help you get to that next level. They're always looking for new and young talent, and for what you can bring to the table. Because you have a different set of skills that they don't have. The technology side, the social media side, everything is advancing, advancing rapidly. So grasp it, take advantage of it, and use it. I'm going to turn it over to you here, Chuck and Marlon. Yes, yeah. uh, can talk, talk about a little bit about what you did here. All right, my name is Marlon Carter, certified business plan and financial specialist with Allstate um, after retirement. All State Financial Services. Uh, grew up in Acres Home, Acres Home, Texas. All right. Before, 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 way before the before, before, before. Uh, Graduated from Texas High School, played football for Demons High School. Uh, graduated from Texas Southern University, Third Ward. Now I'm working on my MBA at the A.O. Baylor University. Leading the Big 12. Right, Mr. Vita? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Those days didn't happen when you were in school. So what are who's going to be rich here? Oh. How are you going to get rich? Making money. You don't know? What's your plan? Oh. Plan? Oh. 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 My man right here, Red. It would be like, if I'm making in sports, I'm in, I'm in straight up like investing in a business that I know is going to make it. It's like in, like in the long run, when I'm done with sports, I'm going to have money. And I'm going like to buy like different shops and stuff, like uh, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm going to hold on so make So Sha Shaq is a perfect example. So Shaq took his athletic prowess, you know, and it's, a, it's ability on the court to earn millions, tens of hundreds of millions. But I can pretty much guarantee, I'm not his accountant or his financial advisor, but I bet Shaq is more, made way more now outside of basketball than he was in basketball. You know, everybody want to be, you know, in sports, the, the starting quarterback, starting running back, you know, best defensive tackle, you know, even the head coach, and you're making millions, tens of millions. But I aspire y'all to become the person that's making the real money, the person that's signing their checks. So if I'm giving you 10 million a year, best believe I'm making 100 million a year. All right? Uh, also, I would advise that you have a contingency plan. So sports may not always work out. You know, what's going to happen when the minute that a doctor tell you, I'm sorry, but you can't play no more. You know, if you take one more step, you won't walk again. All right? And then... I'm another thing that Mr. Bizet and I was talking about, once you do accumulate that wealth, you know, you're gonna have all the friends, all the buddies, all the homies wanna come and hang around you. Uh, money may not change you, but it's gonna change everybody around you. Everybody. You're gonna start hearing from people that you haven't talked to since high school or the third grade. You know, it could be a family member that never did anything for you, but said that, that boy or girl ain't gonna do nothing to life. He said it to the penitentiary. And when you show them something differently, those are the main ones that are going to come and try to ask you for money and try to get inside your circle. So you're going to have to surround yourself with a team of a mentor that's going to be a really good advisor. Somebody that's been there, somebody that's been in that spotlight, somebody like Mr. Music, you know, that can keep you guided. You're going to need someone that's going to take care of your finances, be transparent and be honest. You don't want someone that you can, that's who you're going to give direct discretionary uh, approval for or permission to write checks out of your accounts. A lot of athletes now, we read on the news that they, their financial advisor took, you know, $100 million from them. They didn't know it. Uh, you don't need to do anything to where you, you're just overly expressing or overly exposing your wealth. You know, if you ever look at the owner of, uh, of Macintosh, all right, if you ever saw Steve Jobs dressed any kind of way when he was still alive, he did not have on one designer thread. <laughs> All right, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, you, they look like they're buying clothes out of Walmart. And those are the guys that you want to aspire to be. Another thing that I'm going to recommend is that make decisions that's going to benefit you. Make decisions that are going to make sure that you achieve your goals. And don't worry about popular opinion. 
Now, when I talk about popular opinion, I'm going to give you a story about myself really quickly. <clears throat> so every Friday when I was in high school, we would go to a dance at my church, and it was, they call it the Catholic Church. And so we do those dances every Friday. You have the same little girls there, and all guys want to see new girls. No. Three of my buddies were in one of my buddies' mother's cars. And they decided they're going to go across town to another little teen club where they can hang out and say, man, there are better looking girls over there. I got in the car with them, and something said, you know what, Marlon, get out. So I told them, dude, I'm not going to go. You know, and they're like, oh, man, you sorry, you're weak. I'm like, all right, that's fine. You know, I didn't go. The next week, I saw them back at the dance, and they were telling me how much fun they had. So when I get, I'm like, okay, I'm going this time. So I get in the car with them. We get ready to pull out on West Montgomery. And five carloads of HPD police officers surrounded the car. Guns drawn, everybody got out. So little did I know that that weekend before, they went down the street and robbed the gas station. They actually handcuffed all of us, took us to that gas station individually, and the only person that got to get out and leave was me. And I got to leave because the person identified me as not being part of that three group. So that was in high school. My last friend that was in that car just got out of prison a few years ago and got killed a few months ago. So you're going to come to that fork in the road. And when you get to that fork in the road, you got to make a decision that's going to benefit you and you always have to think 10 years ahead. You know, you guys that want to work for the NFL, you guys that want to be in social media or broadcasting, everything that you, not, you do now will dictate your success at that time. So it may not be cool now, but you know what, it's gonna be even better later. And I always ask people, you know, uh, everybody wanna be rich, but I'm like, have you seen that commercial with that Lamborghini on it? They're like, no. And I'm like, the reason why you don't see commercials with Lamborghinis on it, because people that can afford them are not watching TV. They're mm -hmm. constantly learning, they're constantly investing, they're constantly doing things to get them to the next level. So when you wanna to go to that next level, anybody that wanna stay here, forget about them. Be friends, be cordial, but <clears throat> stay on your trajectory. To get where you want to go. Mm. Feel me? Okay. Uh, also, I'm going to keep it brief and short. I'm sorry, I got another meeting to get to. Uh, but what I'm going to do is talk to Mr. Bize, and I want to come in, and we're going to start talking to you guys about investing in the market, you know, about uh, wealth accumulation and wealth preservation. And once you preserve, hold that wealth or achieve that wealth, we're going to preserve it because we're going to know that money's not going to change you. It's going to change everybody around you, right? Yes, sir. And we're going to build up a defense for that, right? You take care of mama, that's it. All right? All right, thank y'all. All right, just clap it up.